this is going to get me high. That's, that's really all you're thinking about. Well, I first heard about it in high school. So my buddies were doing it. It didn't come up on like drug tests. My parents were always on me. It made me crazy. So I thought, hey, why not try it? And I smoked it and like, it's not even just a high, it's just like really mind altering. And when you think of mind alternating drugs, it's literally just mind alternating. Um, it kind of changes the world around you. My first time, I ended up having a seizure. My very first time smoking K2. First of all, this drug can kill you. Okay, yo, first off, before I even get into this crazy ass story, and believe me, it's crazy as fuck. I do not, and I repeat, do not condone the use of any hard drug. I am simply making this video for educational purposes only, just to hopefully inform the youth, and honestly, any age for that matter, whether you're 14, 24 like me, 84, it doesn't matter about the harsh realities of terrible substances like you know, the one that I'm gonna be talking about in this video. And if you don't care about yourself enough to stay away from these terrible things, then think about your friends and your family who will suffer deeply to see you go through stuff like the way I'm gonna talk about in this video. So with all that being said, let's uh, go ahead and jump right into this crazy ass story about the time that I witnessed an overdose in school. Let's get it. Okay, so before I get into the story about that fateful day, the person who the story is about, uh, thankfully he did not die, okay? He very much could have, okay? It's a very serious thing, but an overdose is simply, as it states, you know, it's an overdosage of any particular substance that you have taken too much of and are now having adverse effects. Like for example, you can even overdose on something like coffee, which is probably why you see so many white girls going out and doing, no, no, I'm just kidding. I just, I just wanted to make that clear just so you guys know that when I say overdose, it doesn't mean that, you know, person died, right? It just means that someone took too much of a specific substance and it just didn't react well with them. And that's exactly what happened in this story. Okay, so this story takes back from when I was either a sophomore or a junior in high school. And bear with me, my memory is very foggy when it comes to these specific years. I myself was dabbling with a lot of very scary substances back in the day and it kind of, you know, altered my memory a lot. So uh, it was any regular day at school. Um, I was a massive pothead as I am now, all right? Um, so smoking before, during, after school was completely normal. But unfortunately, that wasn't the only thing that my degenerate 15, 16 year old mind was consuming at the time. I was also dabbling in many other drugs, Xannies, acid, alcohol. I mean, you name it, I was most likely taking it. And arguably the worst substance on this list, well, in my opinion, the worst substance hands down on this list was a drug called Spice, AKA K2 synthetic weed or legal. Now the craziest thing about this drug, hence the name legal, was that it was legal. Yes, like it was completely fine for you to consume. It was completely legal. You could just walk into any smoke shop if you're 18 and just go ahead and buy it off the shelf and consume it. And it would basically just get people fucked up, okay? So if you're not very familiar with, you know, Spice or K2, whatever you might know it as, it's basically just a substance that was created for people who are trying to get off of smoking weed. It was a, that's why, hence the, the name synthetic weed, because it was, you know, trying to get people to stop smoking weed so you can go and buy it legally at a smoke shop. Now, I don't know who in their right mind decided that this was okay because not one singular person in the world has ever died from consuming cannabis alone. And this substance was killing people left and right. And for those of you who have unfortunately heard about Spice or even you know dabbled in it with it yourself, uh, you would know how terrible of a drug it is. And the reason that it was so popular at the time was it was essentially untraceable, all right? So it wouldn't show up in a drug test. They didn't have a drug test for it. It was completely new. And people who were on probation would smoke it because, you know, they couldn't smoke weed. And most of the time, these people were on probation because of weed already, you know, so, and they wanted something to smoke, you know, to get high, and they would have to resort to smoking spice because it was the only thing that was, you know, legal and it wouldn't even show up in a drug test. And my dumbass, uh, I was not on probation. I was just simply consuming it just to consume it to get that high. Yeah, I mean, I was a completely different breed 
back in the day. And thankfully, it wasn't like as mainstream as, you know, say other substances like, you know, Xanax or opioids or whatever. Thank God. I mean, it was really only like the true degenerates like, you know, myself who were dabbling with it to begin with. And at the time when I actually first started, uh, you know, using it, it was actually not even legal at that point. It was already banned from every smoke shop because then they started to realize the effects that it was, you know, having on people. They quickly removed it from all of their shelves. And now you know a little bit more about the substance that I'm talking about in this video. We can go ahead and start talking about what actually happened on that day. So, uh, you know, like I said, it was kind of like any other day. Um, I was going to lunch. Okay. It was, I think, after third or fourth period heading to lunch. And uh, that was around the time where I would usually go to the restroom and a lot of other people, right? We'd go to the restroom. And the crazy thing about this drug was that unlike weed, all right? It smells like crazy. This did not, all right? This pretty much had no odor at all. So going into the restroom stall, packing a bowl, smoking it up, the only thing you really had to hide was the smoke itself. The smell of the spice really didn't have too much of an odor. Um, I know some people said that they, they could smell it sometimes. I know there were some batches that may smell a little bit more than the others, but for the most part, it didn't really have a strong odor. Probably why it was also extremely popular among us degenerates because we could just go into the restroom real quick during you know break or lunch or whatever, pack a bowl, smoke it, and pretty much no one would be the wiser. Nowadays, it's just kids with carts in there, you know, freaking pens and vapes and all that type of stuff. It's kind of the same thing, except this was out of a pipe and you know we had to i usually had to make my own pipe it was like a little zebra pen i don't know if you guys have ever seen those i would take those apart make a little pipe with that and just kind of pack little one hitters and there you go and around this time when it happened i myself was also pretty heavily into this um there was about two separate like i guess you call them binges or whatever that i had with this substance um each lasting a couple months and it was like an everyday occurrence when I was using this multiple times a day. So, you know, there I am sitting with the homies in the lunch table. I'm just kind of there kicking it. And then all of a sudden I see this guy who I'm not like friends with. He's kind of more of like an acquaintance. I know of him. You know, we say, hey, what's up to each other in the, in the, in the hallways. He's uh, I've had a couple sessions with him in the past. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to use his name uh, for this. I'll just call him Jay. All right. But um, yeah, so this guy, Jay. He comes and he starts, you know, trotting into the lunchroom. And, you know, it, it's high school lunch. You know, everyone's, you know, loud and obnoxious. You know, everyone's a ton of people in the cafeteria. So no one's really paying attention to any such thing, all right? So I'm just there kicking it, and I decide to look up. And at that specific time, he starts to kind of cross my table. And, you know, because of my, you know, personal experiences with this substance, I quickly saw him and identified what was going on with this dude. Another thing about this drug is that kind of like weed, um, this substance would immediately get you high as fuck. I mean, there'd be some times where I'd be hitting the pipe and halfway through inhaling, I was already feeling the effects of the hit. And one really obvious like telltale sign to look for when someone was, you know, either high as fuck on spice was to see their skin complexion. Okay, you can see right here, you know, got some color to me. That would completely go away and make you completely pale, all right? You were as pale as a ghost, and you would stare at that pretty much the entire duration of the high. So, you know, with that being said, when Jay comes into the lunchroom, I easily spot him because I can see just the look on his face. I mean, it just looks like a zombie, man. He looked dead, he was just like, you know, I mean, he was completely pale. He, his, his walk, his walk was completely fucked up, I mean, he looked like a zombie, literally. I mean, he walked in there kind of like, just like completely out of it, bro. Like he was gone. Another crazy thing about this drug is that because it was illegal and they were trying to crack down on, you know, making a drug test for it, a lot of the times that they, they would, you know, make a drug test and be able to detect it, uh, these dealers would simply just kind of change up the batches and add different things in there so that they wouldn't be able to be detected. So these dealers, who knows what the fuck they're putting in this shit, man. I mean, they could have been putting fucking rat poison for all I know. So with that, I mean, you could get a batch that didn't hit you as hard, or you can get one that fucking hit you like a train. And I'm not sure what batch this dude, you know, smoked out of. He, you know, comes trotting in, and again, like I said, he was pale, freaking walking around like a zombie. And I holler at him, like, yo, bro, get the fuck over here, bro. Like, what the fuck are you doing? You're gonna get caught. Now, I don't know if this dude was like a massive spice head at the time, 
but all I know was he was tripping the fuck out and I needed to get him to sit down because he was gonna get his ass caught. So I, I called out to him, I said, yo, Jake, get your ass over here, bro. Like, come sit with me. And then there we go. He, he's walking and all of a sudden he goes, you know, I'm like, holy shit, this dude is fucked up. You know what I mean? So he comes, you know, stumbling over to my table. You know, there's an open seat right next to me. He sits right down. And that's when I actually got to see a little bit you know, more up close about his condition. And that's when I was started to trip out myself. I mean, this dude was so fucked up. It wasn't funny, like, at all. I mean, I was so I was actually very concerned about this guy. You know, at first, being a dumbass 15, 16-year-old, I was kind of up laughing at it, kind of like, yo, bro, like, you're so fucked up. Like, what the fuck's going on with you, you know? But then he looked at me in my eyes, bro. And I'm telling you right now, it was like seeing a fucking demon. I mean, it was... There was no soul there, bro. Like, he was completely gone. It was it was not the same dude, okay? Completely pale, bloodshot eyes. I mean, his his lips and his everything was just, it was just so, so bad, all right? So he, he's, he's sitting down there next to me, and he's kind of just, like, slumped over, kind of like that. He's kind of just, you know, trying to focus, or I don't know what he was doing. He was completely out of his mind. So I'm there trying to talk to him, like, yo, bro, like, what's going on, bro? Like, you good? Like, like don't worry. And okay, another thing about this drug was that it's not like weed, you know, weed can kind of have a couple hour high. Usually, usually this substance only lasted for about 10 to 15 minutes. The, the high was very, very short. So you can kind of smoke it. And then next, you know, 20 minutes, you're, you know, sober again. So me knowing that I kind of just try to tell him like, yo, bro, like, just chill out. Like, you're fine. Like, you know, it'll pass in the next 10 minutes. You'll be good. Like, I, I've, I haven't been to that level of, you know, fucked up. But I've been close to that level. And at the time, uh, I was the only one in my group table. All right, there's probably about 10 other dudes I was sitting with. Uh, they, I was the only one dumb enough to actually fuck around with this drug. So out of my entire table, they started looking at him, being like, yo, what the fuck is going on with him? They had no clue what was going on. So I was the only one who actually knew, you know, the severity of what was actually happening with him. So I started to try, you know, talking to him, trying to be like, yo, bro, like, What's going on? Tell me what you feel. Like, you know, trying to, you know, kind of uh, uh, trip sit him. So when I was there trying to, you know, get him to say anything back to me, I started to get very concerned because it's like, I don't even know if he was actually processing anything that I was actually saying. So again, I mean, he, he's just kind of looking down to the floor, kind of just like swaying back and forth. You know what I mean? Kind of just pretty much just a zombie at that point. And I'm kind of nudging him like, yo, bro, like, are you good, bro? Like, like, what's good? Like, talk to me, you know what? And then he kind of just like shows me being like, and I was like, holy shit. Like, he wasn't saying any coherent words. You know what I mean? Like, he wasn't being coherent at all. He was completely out of it. I mean, his words were literally just mumble. I mean, he was like, I was just like, holy shit. This dude is fucked up, man. You know what I mean? And again, me being the only one in that group, and there's a table behind us, so about like a bunch of preppy kids, and that's when they started kind of, you know, taking notice of what was going on. And it was at that point where I started progressively getting very concerned about his well-being. I mean, I didn't know what to do. Again, I was the only one who actually kind of knew what was going on with him, um, just from self-experience, but I didn't know how to be like, I guess on the receiving end of a trip sitter you know what i mean i was always the one getting fucked up and no one really ever have to like to take care of me like that but i was never the one put into put into the position where i had to like take care of somebody on a terrible trip like that so then it was at this point when i was like yo i mean bro like it, i didn't really honestly i really didn't know what to say to him i really didn't know what to say uh he was completely out of it I didn't want to get him in trouble, you know what I mean? Um, Cause I, I know he, you know, I don't want to like snitch on him, you know, back in the day, I, it was really big on that. You know, I didn't want to get him in trouble, but now that, you know, I'm an adult, I know that I should have immediately gone to somebody, uh, whether it was a teacher or an administrator and, you know, let them know of uh, the situation. Cause then it was at this point where he started making like heaving sounds where like he basically was going to throw up. All right. And I was like, oh shit. And then I saw him, you know, put his hand in his, in his sweater and he tried to close his mouth like that. So he was looking down and he goes like, and I saw him go like that and then throw up, just kind of start seeping from his hands. And I was like, holy shit, bro. Like, damn. And, and the thing is about, again, another terrible thing about this drug 
it would go straight to your stomach, especially if you didn't have anything to eat, which I'm sure he didn't because he just kind of walked right into lunch. And um, if you didn't have anything to eat, especially, I mean, even if you did have something to eat, it would always just go straight to your, your stomach and it would get you very nauseous. So seeing him throw up, I it did scare me, but at the same time, knowing that like that's kind of how I would always feel, the throw up sensation, um, I just kind of thought of it as like, oh shit, you know, like he's, he's throwing up, you know what I mean? And then, um, so then I go and I, you know, I'm like, oh shit, like he's kind of throwing up all over the place. I get my lunch plate and I kind of hand it to him and he starts throwing up all over my lunch plate, all right? And uh, so he's just going. I mean, he's it's like fucking exorcist type shit. He's just letting it all out. And at that point, you know, everything was out in the open. I mean, there was no way of me trying to help him conceal any of this shit. I mean, everyone at my table was seeing him just puke out everything. The freaking preppy kids behind us were trying to turn around and be like, oh, what the fuck's going on? Like, was he sick or what? So... At this point, I was just like, holy shit, I was really gonna just like get up and just go to a teacher and tell them about what was going on. And right when I was about to kind of do that, he starts, no, bro, what the fuck, bro, shut the fuck up, bro. And like, he just wasn't, he just, he didn't want me to go, right? He didn't want me to fucking leave him. He didn't want me to go and get help, essentially. And uh, me being a fucking idiot at the time, I, you know, listened to him. A guy who was out of his fucking mind. Uh, I listened to that dude. So all I felt like I could do at that point was just to kind of comfort him through this trip. Like I said, these trips usually only last about 10 to 15 minutes. And uh, he rolled in at about maybe halfway mark of lunch. So there's about good 15 minutes left um, from when he first, you know, kind of came in. And uh, so I'm looking at the time, looking at the time, and I'm like, holy shit, you guys five minutes. Like the bell's gonna ring in the next five minutes. And this dude is so far gone. Like, I, I really don't think it's going to be enough time. I mean, he's going to have to either go to the restroom and kind of wait it out the next period or I, honestly, I didn't know what the fuck what was going to happen with him. And then, you know, by the time I knew it, there we go. Ding, ding, ding. The bell starts to ring. And I was like, holy shit, what do I do with this guy? You know, I mean, he, I'm basically taking care of him and he has like no clue what's going on. And it was at this point, like I really started to panic because I was like, I I didn't want to leave this guy. I felt terrible for him. I know exactly what he was kind of going through. Um, and I didn't want him, I didn't want to get him in trouble. You know what I mean? Like a fucking idiot. Best thing to do would have been just to go and get someone so he can get, you know, adequate help. There was honestly really nothing that I could have done to help him out. He needed to get professional help. So everyone's leaving the cafeteria. Um, I'm kind of sticking around with him and I, I kind of just tell him like, yo bro, like, what, what, what do you want to do, bro? Like, we're, the, the bell rang. Like, we got to go to class. Like, I don't, I don't know if you want to kind of, like, wait it out in the restroom. Like, I, I was willing to wait out with him. Um, but at that point, I mean, he wasn't even really responding back to me. I mean, he was so fucked up. He Again, he couldn't really even make out words. So he was basically just kind of still slumped over there. And then all of a sudden, he just kind of, like, lifts his head and realizes that, you know, everyone's leaving the cafeteria. So he's kind of just like stumbling out of the cafeteria. I'm having to kind of hold him like, yo, bro, are you good? He's like, ooh, 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 you know? I'm like, holy shit, bro, like, what do I do? So I kind of start walking him out of the cafeteria and, you know, his legs were just like noodles. I mean, he, he, he couldn't stop shaking. He was just like, you know, like that. And I was like, I mean, there was literally a teacher right in the middle of the hallway. I was this close to just walking him to that teacher and just kind of, you know, taking him that way and then out of fucking nowhere there was this other dude that i actually hung out with a lot um we're just gonna call him uh c for this uh video uh for this story we're gonna call him c and uh well c he kind of came out of fucking nowhere and he said yo yo get the fuck out of here bro get the fuck out of here i got him don't worry about it i got him get the fuck out of here go to class and i was like the fuck where did you get it like what the hell this dude was also a spice head i would smoke a lot of spice with that guy uh c and he would, um, you know, he always, he was one of the dudes who always wanted to fucking take control of everything, clearly, right? He, he saw, he spotted um, Jay uh, just the way I did, all right? He, so he knew immediately what was going on with him. So I think that's why he kind of came out of nowhere, decided to be like, yo, like, don't worry about it. I got it from here. And I was like, I don't know what the fuck you're going to do about it, but all right, bro, fuck it. I mean, I, I kind of just told Jay, like, yo, I hope you're good, bro. Like, and then there we go. They kind of just went walking on down the hallway and I basically just went to my class. So then after that, you know, the day went on. Um, it was about, what? So I was after lunch. I went to my either fourth or fifth period. And uh, I think it was, it was close to the end of the day. Uh, I think it was probably around seventh period. 
I ended up, you know, going on Snapchat and seeing a bunch of people posting videos of Jay uh, being taken out into an ambulance on a stretcher. Yeah. So guys, uh, my camera died. Uh, that was yesterday. Uh, it's another day. All right. Hence, uh, you know, the new shirt. But uh, yeah, either way, uh, where, where, where did I leave off? From my school, uh, from my high school, um, the way it was uh, laid out is basically we just had one massive hallway uh, from the, the beginning of the, the school to the end of the school. And there was like three separate halls for like the seventh, I mean seventh, what the fuck, we're not middle school. For sophomores, juniors, and seniors, and then freshmen were like in another area. But um, so that's kind of the layout. So it was a long hallway, and then you got the three hallways kind of going like that. Um, in the very beginning of the school, in the, in the very front, there was also an auditorium. And at the way back was where we were, right, in the um, cafeteria, all right? So it was a pretty long-ass walk. And essentially, uh, I talked to uh, C after all that went down. Uh, like I said, I was seeing a bunch of stuff on Snapchat about Jay being taken out on a stretcher uh, to an ambulance and that was pretty much the last I had ever I actually heard about that situation until after school I met up with C to kind of see what the fuck was going on you know what I mean because I basically gave Jay you know to him in a way or he kind of just took him out of my arms in, in a way but um but yeah so I met up with him I was like yo bro like the fuck what, what happened like tell me what happened what the fuck happened and um uh, it's going from his words, from what I remember, he basically just said that he walked, his, his idea was to basically just kind of walk him to the auditorium because, um, at that specific time, I don't know what was going on. I think they might've been doing either like construction or, or I don't know exactly what's going on, but one of the hallways, I believe it was either the sophomore or junior hallway was, uh, being kind of worked on. And a lot, a lot of the, the classrooms were unable to be, you know, occupied. So they ended up taking a lot of the classrooms that were supposed to be, you know, in that hallway and they moved them over to the auditorium. So a lot of kids were kind of just in the auditorium. There was multiple different classes. And uh, so it made it very easy for a lot of fucking degenerates to go in and just kind of skip class all day and just kind of sit in the auditorium. So um, I guess he kind of had the same idea as me where I was going to kind of just like wait it out with him in the restroom. But he decided to go and try and do that in the auditorium. So he made that long walk from the cafeteria to the auditorium and essentially i guess what happened was when they finally got there to the auditorium there was a shitload of people you know kind of going in and out of there you know moving classes and everything like that and so basically you no know, think of it you know as an auditorium right so you go you get in and it kind of you know like angles downward you know so you're going you know down and kind of like the seats kind of rise up you know and then you got the stage and everything like that so Going down, uh, it's not, there's not like steps or anything. It's just like a, a slope, you know, it's a, it's a, like a ramp almost, you know? And essentially from what I remember him telling me was that it was towards, you know, the beginning of when it kind of slopes, kind of slopes down. He basically tripped over himself. This is Jay, right? So Jay pretty much tripped over himself and fell to the floor and fucking fell face first, right? And when that happened, you know, a bunch of people looked over like, oh, what the fuck's going on? Uh, C, he pretty much freaked out. He kind of <laughs> came to the, you know, realization that this was too much for him to handle and essentially just kind of booked it out of there. All right. Kind of almost left him for dead, essentially, you know, okay. It sounds a little dramatic, right? But well, I mean, it's in reality, it's kind of not that dramatic. I mean, it, it's almost kind of like what happened. I mean, the dude really probably could have gotten very seriously hurt or even died you know so uh it's a very scary situation um but yeah i mean he kind of just freaked out uh saw him fucking fall face forward and uh kind of just booked it out of there you know what i mean and uh so yeah i mean he at that point you know a bunch of people realized what was going on they saw the dude fall the administration kind of went over to him he was completely you know out of it he wasn't even able to really stand up from what i was hearing and uh and then, of course, the details on that after what happened there, um, kind of, you know, I don't really know exactly what happened, to be honest, because I didn't, you know, I wasn't there. <laughs> but, um, you know, for the most part, uh, after that, I mean, obviously, I saw on Snapchat, I saw on Snapchat that, you know, people were fucking posting him getting, you know, taken by the administration and, you know, taken away in the ambulance on a stretcher. And like I said, uh, very fortunately, the he was okay. All right. He was, you know, sent to the hospital. 
and you know they helped him out and they got him they got him you know better and uh that's pretty much the last i ever really saw of jay because he was then transferred to an alternative school which we called uh, ing all right I don't, don't ask me what that the acronym stands for it's just we called it ing which is just you know an alternative school for i guess you can say like the bad kids or whatever or mainly it's just a bunch of kids who got caught doing drugs or uh, if you were in a fight or something like that you know what i mean so uh many different times uh, i was very close to being sent something like that but uh i just you know got lucky you know what i'm saying but um but yeah man i mean he got sent to that alternative school and i think he usually stay there for at least three or four months i, I believe and uh you know they fucking shave your head they make you wear like these like oh my pretty much like like prison bro it's like they make you wear like a a gray hoodie and gray pants and you can't have any pencils you can't have any nothing like it's just like it's literally like a they have like a metal detector and all that stuff this is this is just like, uh stories from people that i've had like friends that i've had who have gone to you know this, this alternative school and uh, i've had multiple friends go to this alternative school um he was just you know one uh like i said he wasn't even really like my friend friend he was like a guy that i kind of seshed with a couple times before but uh so yeah but i know he got sent there and I pretty much never saw him again, to be honest. Um, I think he might have, after he got out of that school, I don't know if he went to another school or what happened. I'm not sure. Maybe he just dropped out. I have no fucking clue, to be honest. But, uh, but yeah, man, that's pretty much the story of uh, how I witnessed an overdose in school. Um, very scary. You know what I mean? I, I think about it now, you know, as a, an adult. You know, I'm 24 now. Um, again, like I said, that happened when I was either like 15 or I guess barely turning 16. Um, it's almost 10 years ago now. And uh, it still resonates with me now because it's just like, shit, bro. Like that shit could have gone so south. So, which it was. It was already going so south. It was already bad. It was a terrible situation. But it could have been a lot worse. You know what I mean? And um, my dumb ass could have fucking helped them out a lot sooner. Um, also, C, you know, he could have probably done the same thing all right but uh, we're fucking idiots for not really realizing how far gone this dude was um again i mean like we're just dumb fucking 15 16 year olds who thought i guess we could have fucking helped him or handled it handled it ourselves or something i have no fucking clue but uh yeah man i kind of want to you know make this video and kind of share this with you guys about you know my experience and i got so many more stories when it comes to you know my high school experiences with you know certain drugs or parties or you know crazy shit crazy shenanigans that i got into in uh, high school and um yeah man i mean it, it's very scary to know that you know i grew up in a very good household where you know i had very loving parents um my parents weren't together right but it, i never really took that as like something that's like you know impacted me or anything like that like i i felt like i had a very good upbringing and yet i was still a degenerate to get involved <laughs> in certain things like that and uh, get involved with certain people doing very shady things you know what i mean and um so again i mean if you guys like the story uh and you want to hear more crazy stories about you know stuff that i've experienced or i've heard of friends experiencing then uh you know leave it in the comments let me know if you guys want to hear more i got countless stories and um but yeah man it's uh this one's a very tragic one i think this is uh the, the first iteration of my little kind of story time type shit but uh yeah, man. So that is the very unfortunate story of how I witnessed a overdose in school. So uh, hope you guys, I guess, enjoyed this story. I'm not really sure how it's really enjoyable. It's really just more, you know, kind of bringing awareness, like I said. Um, but uh, yeah, man, I'm going to be hopefully doing a lot more videos, uh, story time related and maybe even, you know, other types of it. I got a bunch of crazy videos I want to do. Um, but yeah, man, if you guys uh, like this video, thank you guys so, so much for sticking around to the end. And uh, make sure you guys like, subscribe, check out the other videos I got. Um, I'm just, if you guys haven't noticed, I got a shitload of raw products in the back. I entered into a competition and they sent me a lot of stuff for, you know, placing. But uh, love you guys. Thank you guys so, so much for sticking around to the end. And I'll see you guys next time.